The more I play with the Mini 3, the more I'm falling in love with it. Absolutely amazing little bit of kit. But some of the settings that are set by default when it comes out of the box can lead to some fairly jerky and jumpy video. So today I'm just gonna give you a few hints on how to smooth things out. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and all week I've been down in the South Downs playing with nature and also the new Mini 3 Pro and you saw my review the other day. I absolutely love it. Now one of the criticisms I had of course is the fact that the gimbal and camera is the most exposed element on the actual uh, drone itself. Many of you have pointed out that of course it needs to be exposed to have the freedom to look up and down and around. Well I still maintain that a little bit of side protection could have been uh, engineered there but like I said some of the default settings when you get it out of the box actually lead to some fairly jumpy and jerky movements. So today I thought I'd do a very quick video on the three main elements that can smooth things out. Now one of the first things you can do is look at how the obstacle avoidance system works in the APAS settings. So if you have it in bypass, you'll see here that it is actually quite flighty. Now, um, the Mavic 3 had this issue as well, and it was catching some people out. They smoothed things out a little bit in a firmware update, but still here with the Mini 3 Pro, you can see that just a slight tap on the sticks with the uh, settings in bypass mode will result in the drone jumping and jerking around. And this can be quite off-putting for you. It can make you feel a little bit unsettled. And of course it could, easily uh, flit sideways into a branch. Remember there's only forwards, rear and downwards obstacle avoidance. There's nothing to stop it hitting a branch from sideways. So just be aware that when you have it in bypass mode, it will be a little bit more flighty. If you put it in brake mode, here you can see that when I do a slight touch on the sticks, it barely moves. And even with a full lock on the sticks, you'll see that it's still got a very smooth sidewards movement. So. Here I'm just trying to say to you, be aware, bypass mode is brilliant for flying around obstacles and flying around trees, but it will make the controls a lot more jumpy and sensitive. Now, one of the easiest ways to control or affect the sensitivity of the sticks is to go into advanced settings and look for EXP or exponential settings. This is a really useful set of adjustments that you can make that reduces the sensitivity of the movement as you start to move the sticks. So it doesn't affect the overall speed, but what it does do is mean that you need to make more of a stick movement to get the same corresponding movement of the drone. What I'm trying to say there is a very light touch on the sticks will result in a very small movement of the drone, and that can be really useful to smooth things out. So you can see in the EXP settings, you've got three separate adjustments. One is for the throttle, the actual speed of movement. One is for the rudder, which is gonna actually uh, how quick the, the drone is gonna turn. And the last is for the uh, four-way directional movement, forwards, backwards, right, or left. Now you can make adjustments here by either putting in the numeric number at the bottom or just dragging the shape top right, as, as you can see here. So again, you can see here that when I've actually dragged that X shape across to make the curve a little bit flatter. A slight touch on the stick results in a much softer movement. So the EXP settings are a very, very useful uh, little bit of adjustment that you can use to dampen down and soften down the stick movements. You still need a light touch, but they will make quite a big difference. Now, one of the more useful settings that you can adjust is under the advanced gimbal settings. So again, you go three dots, control, scroll down until you get to advanced gimbal settings. And when you open up this screen, you can see you've got four sliders, uh, pitch speed, pitch smoothness, your rotation speed, and your smoothness. Now, these are probably the uh, best adjustments that you can make to smooth things out. Now the pitch is literally how fast the camera is pitching up and down and by default it's got quite a fast speed. So when you scroll that wheel on the back of the remote you're going to see the camera move up and down in quite a fast fashion. Again it's not very smooth. If you push the uh, value right down it, you can see that the uh, pitch goes right down to pretty much a snail's pace and it's going to be too slow. So it's something you really want to play around with, but I find a lower pitch speed, but not too low, is about right. But there's the next setting, the smoothness, which I find is a very, very useful setting to have up high. The smoothness acts like a little buffer. So it's literally how fast the speed is reached, and then when you let go of the, uh, the wheel, how fast the pitch slows down to a stop. 
but it's the next two adjustments that I think have the single biggest effect on smoothing things out, the yaw rotational speed and the yaw smoothness. Now yaw is simply how fast the drone is rotating and having a low your rotation speed is I think very very important again here and if you jack that value right up you can see that when you move the left stick the drone turns very fast and you get a very very jerky and nasty result so again you want to bring that value down not too low otherwise you'll be uh, waiting forever for the drone to turn but again a nice low value I don't know about 15 degrees per second is probably about right again this is something you're going to have to play with but now when you drink, bring that down you can see that when you move that left stick the drone is turning a lot smoother and slower. But again, it's the smoothness setting below that actually has the, a nice extra effect. Just like with the pitch, the smoothness is simply a buffer. How quickly it starts turning and how slowly it stops turning. When you put that value right up, you can see that when you move that stick, the drone starts turning slowly and then gets to its uh, turning speed. And again, when you let go of the stick, it comes to a gradual stop. It doesn't stop immediately. So again, for me, as I said, this is something you want to play around with, but having a lowish speed, but a high smoothness value is going to result in the smoothest videos when you're uh, flying and filming. So there you go, there are three simple things that can have a huge impact on the smoothness of the flight and therefore the smoothness of the video that you're filming. Remember with the um, APAS settings, if you have it in bypass, it will be a little bit more flighty and jumpy. It's a brilliant mode to fly in, but do remember that if it flicks sideways, it hasn't got any sideways uh, uh, obstacle avoidance and you could hit something. So just be a little bit careful if you're playing around uh, in bypass mode. As for the EXP settings, like I said, have a little play with those, but generally the flatter the curve, then the uh, less sensitive the sticks are for those first few movements. And then being less sensitive means that the movement will start and stop a little bit uh, more smooth for you. And then finally, the uh, speed and smoothness settings. These are the ones you really want to have a nice play with. These are the ones that easily have the largest effect and impact on how smooth you're going to be flying and moving and rotating and pitching and all the rest of it. I forgot to mention, of course, with those speed and smoothness settings, you've got three sets of values, one for normal, one for sports mode and one for cine mode. Again, it's personal preference here. If you're filming in sports mode, do you still want jerky turns? I don't know. My advice is have a play and see what works for you. But in general, you probably want the speed lower and the smoothness higher. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Now remember, like I said, you can pan upwards with this uh, little drone and you can take some brilliant shots, especially if you're surrounded by trees. Just remember though, that uh, obstacle avoidance isn't always gonna pick out those twigs. And like I said, nothing on the side. So watch out, because you don't really wanna uh, crash this. Anyway, that's about it. I've got a couple more days down here in the South Downs. Hopefully you found this video useful. Give me a little thumbs up, always helps the video cause. And of course, if you haven't hit the sub, then don't get notified when I put something out. Either Either way, I um, hope you're having fun if you've managed to get hold of the uh, Mini 3 Pro. Um, I should have the combo pack coming in the next few days, courtesy of Heli Guy, so I'm going to be looking forward to playing with that as well. Anyway, until next time, wherever you are in the world, stay safe and sane, have fun, happy flying.